The illegal elbow. Elbow techniques. This is the elbow. An elbow from here. I'll throw the elbow. Yeah, the illegal elbow. All right, people, we're back, man. Illegal Elbow Radio, another exciting episode for you guys, man. This is Brian from Illegal Elbow Radio, Illegal Elbow on Twitter. And this is Dan from MMA Aftermath on Facebook and Twitter. Eve Edwards coming in here against uh, Akbar Areola. Areola, nice-looking record. I don't know a ton about the guy. He's I know he's very new to us, so we can't really comment a lot on the guy. But Eve Edwards has really had a rough time. You know, Dan, you just looked over his... Uh, Record. I haven't got to it myself, but yeah, um, Akbar's, Akbar's um, AK is uh, sensitive, so it's his middle uh, name. So just so you know, Akbar's oh, sensitive. Right. Real, uh, yeah, you know, don't. Yeah, don't go for the breast area. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, dude. dude. <laughs> Carry on, my bad. Eve Edwards obviously come on on a really really hard time. In his last, you know, like like we like we said, last six here. Was it one and five? He said in his last six. That's that's horrible, dude. That really. Sucked. Well, yeah, but uh, I guess you could say it shows overturned here. So I guess we couldn't count that. So okay, but still, it's it's a hard road to hoe. Yeah, here for Eve Edwards and, and Eve, this one. Uh, you know, obviously, like we we were just talking about a second ago, man. We're talking sixty-five. You know. Not to mention his uh, uh, fights before being pro and shit like that, and uh, unsanctioned fights. You know, the guy said he's got anywhere from seventy-five to ninety fights. So, you know, this is this is an interview basically that I heard uh, a couple days ago. But coming into this this fight, what he said basically in his training camp was really just getting back to and have fun rather than going in there worrying about what's what could happen. You know what I mean? I I think. That's really kind of what I've grasped from from the interview. I can't put the exact words on what I'm what I'm trying to say, but it it's almost kind of like, you know, like we just mentioned it a second ago. It's it's almost like he's having a hard time getting excited for the fights. But I know that's not exactly, like I said, I can't pinpoint what I'm thinking here. But the guy really just, really, you know, the guy's got the talent. I think he just really needs to get his mind right. You know what I mean? Or he, he needs to. Um, get his mind right and his focus. And I think that's what what he basically in the interview was saying. You know, it's an interview with uh, Hawani um, on MMA Hour or whatever. But uh, good interview, man. But Eve Edwards, you know, I'm not going to give this, this fight too much time, man. But um, I, I hope to see a good return from him. You know, 22-8 and eight for uh, Areola. I think uh, this could be a good fight, just depending on what, what Areola's background is, man. We, we really don't know, so it's it's hard to say. Hopefully Eve Edwards gets back on track here. I think he will. So I think he's I think his mind's right. Smash, smash, smash. Jared Rolschel coming off of a, a nice victory, I'd have to say, against Saul Pulele. You know, a dominating victory really. Um Saul Pulele has has come in and basically ran through his uh, couple opponents before that, uh, one being uh, Ruan Potts. Ruan Potts coming over from, um, God, I don't know what the uh, the organization is over in South Africa, but he, I think he was a champion. He held a belt over there, but, yes, but he man. dismantled, yeah, he dismantled a Ruan Potts, so plainly did, and a fucking HD Barry. Yeah. yeah. So he was coming in um, known as a guy that would ground and pound your ass and hit heavy hands. Jared Rolschel coming in saying, you know what, dude, I'm going to take this one to my realm, my wheelhouse. I'm going to take it to the ground. I'm going to be all over you for the whole fucking fight. You're going to be carrying my weight. And basically wrestled his ass and got the fucking decisive victory against the soul play, dude. But uh, coming against... Uh, uh, Olenek, man. Uh, what does Olenek bring to the table? Forty-nine and nine and one, dude. It's just a He's sick been around the block a few times. Yeah, on several different bikes, man. I mean, <laughs> uh, his, his background sambo too. So yeah, he's got a good sambo background. Some nice submission wins. Holy shit! You know, Ezekiel choke, triangle choke, rear naked choke, Ezekiel choke. Heel hook, arm bar. I mean, this guy's a, a fucking machine. 
when it comes to different kind of chokes and uh, and shit. Uh, win over Adlon Amagoff. You know, we know that dude. Uh, win over Carol Bedford. You know, fights in uh, KSW a lot. He's had a little bit of a stint in KS, KSW. Uh, win over Baga Agave. We know that dude. I, I believe he's in, uh, or he was. He may have been in UFC um, before. I might be confusing with Bellator too, though, but I know he's been in one of the two. Um, but re- as of recently, went over Neil Grove, uh, Jeff Munson. No, excuse me, I lost to Jeff Munson in 2012. Jeff Munson's an old dude, but he's still out there banging it out, man. I, I, that's what I gotta say, you know what I mean? Uh, went over Mike Hayes in Bellator. Lost to Neil Grove in Bellator, 2010. Neil Grove was still smashing dudes in 2010, so... Uh, Neil Grove recently retired, man. I believe it was early last year or uh, right around that time. But anyway, uh, recent win over Jeff Munson, Deion Starring, uh, Crow Cop, Anthony Hamilton at uh, his last UFC outing in uh, June. It's not a, a huge resume as of late when it comes to notable wins. It's a damn shit ton of experience. The guy's obviously very, very good at what he does. Um, it just really kind of, in my opinion, it goes to show you, it goes to, to me, it's how, how good is a Rochelle going to do against a real, relaxed, Sambo submission dude? I mean, really, I mean, because when you, when you watch this dude fight, he's very relaxed. He, there's no, you know, of course, so is Rochelle. Rochelle, you know, doesn't go in there stressed, you know what I mean? Doesn't go in there with too much urgency, looking to wear, wear himself out. This is actually a pretty fucking good matchup right here, dude. Yeah. I think it'll be a good fight, dude. I think it will be good. Did you look at his – he's 49 wins, 40 of them are by yeah. submission. I didn't even know yeah, that. Yeah, that's what Holy I'm saying. Yeah. That's, what, that's what I was getting at. I was like, if it's going to be a Josh a, – a, a Jerry Rolschel going down and, and, and imposing his will, it's it's going to play right into Alexi's fucking game plan. The way that you just, you just said, dude, this guy is a fucking Sambo master apparently. Damn, dude. And he's good at joint manipulations, I would have to say. Sambo is about that, dude. About joint manipulations. Old school military fucking uh, Russian military style Sambo, bro. This guy's got a shit ton of fucking Jared Jerry Rochelle better fucking protect his fucking legs and arms in this one, dude. <laughs> he better bring really? his ass. Yeah, he, you know, control is one thing. These Sambo guys are fucking dangerous. And the last guy that I've seen that was a, a great Sambo practitioner, <coughs> yeah, fucking Fedor was great. But um, remember a guy named fucking Oleg Taktarov? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, he, was, he was schooling some motherfuckers in the art of Sambo. So you taking um, some beatings, too, man. And Russian dudes can yeah. take some beatings, man. Yes. And if you want to go straight up Sambo itself, go watch Fedor's Sambo fucking um, videos. There's tons of them. Yeah. There's way more Sambo videos of Fedor than there is MMA videos for all those Fedor fans, just so you know. So um, Badass. He's, and anytime there's a Sambo fucking uh, big Sambo tournament in Russia, you can uh, guarantee that Fedor was there. So, back in his heyday. But uh, I got Olenek fucking winning this one, dude. This guy's a crafty vet. And, yeah, Jared Rolschult took out um, uh, a Sol Pulele and stifled a Sol Pulele's game plan by not letting him use those heavy hands. But this is a different fucking guy he's going against, dude. This is a guy who's looking for the sub, apparently. Dude. I just I just looked at this. His last ten fights. He's he's ten and zero in his last ten. Not a single decision in there. Every one of them have been a finish. Dude. One knockout. The rest of them are all submissions. This guy is a fucking nutbag. This, no wonder this guy's in UFC, dude. He's a solid finisher. He could be a head turner in this one, dude. Really could be, man. I mean, I don't care if it gets to the point where he doesn't get to the top because he's thirty seven years old. So you know, I mean. Realistically, if he gets in the you know early 40s here, we'll probably start looking towards the end here. But if the guy makes a hell of a run in UFC and looks really good and makes some fucking coin, I, I'm all for it, man. It's badass. He's got, 
four years maybe. He, yeah, he just, you know, I would say at this point, it's like whether he gets a title shot or not, he deserves a good Dude, run. his nickname is the Boa Constrictor. Yeah. <laughs> don't get a nickname like that unless you got a fucking finishing rate submission-wise like this da- guy does. For it, let's let's go ahead and you know for for fun's sake, uh, his losses. He's been knocked out four times. He's been submitted twice, and the decision three times. He's nine losses, forty nine wins. He's got four knockouts, one of them in his last ten. So uh, forty submissions, eighty two percent submission rate in his in his winning column, eighty two percent submission rate in his wins, four decisions, eight percent. And uh, one other, which is probably a, a draw. It is a draw. He's got one draw to his record. So it's like, holy shit, 82% submission rate. Why UFC isn't all over that? Banging that home to make this guy at least look good because he's in their organization? It's fucking stupid. Yeah. You could fucking reel You could do a fucking five-minute highlight fucking reel on this guy right now. You could really could. Why they don't do yeah. shit like that is beyond me. Let's go ahead and take all the fucking champions and all the guys that are fighting, all the top people that are fighting, and go do a, a press conference with them. But don't say anything about the new up-and-comers. I, you know, wrong fucking idea again, yeah. guys. Hey, how about this? We got a guy that probably <clears throat> has <clears throat> renowned respect, adoration, and is very popular over in his home country of Russia. But oh fuck no! Instead of putting him up on a pedestal and fucking doing a highlight montage of this guy in an upcoming pay per view that you want to stroke like you do, <clears throat> you don't even have to do the five minute montage. You can just at least put the guy in there. And some and I'm sure if you one did, minute. <laughs> if you if you Went through some of his highlights. There would be some badass subs in there, dude. Yeah. Okay. I don't all the, you. Look at this guy's fucking record, dude. It's it's and if if you're looking for guys, well, he's old and he's he's been through a lot. This guy fucking subs people out. He doesn't have to go through the wars. He just takes them out. They're out. No, he doesn't have to get beat in the head and have years taken off his fucking um career. He just takes them down in Sambo and puts them to sleep or makes them tap. That right there elongates your career substantially. It's... Am I wrong, bro? No, hell no. Hell no, man. It's, you know, yeah, it's about dodging the fucking shots, taking the dude down and finishing his ass. This guy's had a really good fucking uh, good run Staying of that. out of the wars. Yep. Yeah, and just to, sh- just to take a look at his last fight alone. Anthony Hamilton, you know, freight train. You could have called him a freight train, uh, you know, coming into UFC until he ran into this dude. I mean, really, it's obviously it's his, uh, excuse me, it's uh, Anthony Hamilton's second fight or third fight into UFC. He's uh, December 6th. He's taking out Todd Duffy. Okay, so, excuse me. He's one and one in UFC right now. So, but I mean, he's done really, really well at other orgs. He's been a uh, rumble on the ridge. You know, MFC, he was actually did really well in MFC. He turned a lot of heads over there. Smolino uh, Rama, which Smolino Rama, I've been screaming about for the last couple of years that this guy needs to be noticed. And he's in World Series of Fighting now. So I believe he's the champion there, I, I believe. Um, he just beat Derek Maiman. Yep, there we go. He just beat Derek Maiman for the, for the championship in World Series of Fighting. So, But Anthony Hamilton beat him a couple of, uh, excuse me, last year. <clears throat> uh, since then, lost to Olenek, and uh, the way he beat him was 2 minutes, 18 seconds in the first round, neck crank. I mean, who the fuck does a neck crank anymore? And this guy's won his last two, and I'm talking about Olenek. He's done his last two wins are by neck crank. I mean, it's just... <laughs> talk about knowing your craft, man. I mean... Yeah, it's like, dude, don't uh, get... Don't... Don't don't get caught. <laughs> mm-hmm. But that just goes to show how excited we get about heavyweights, people. 